Hey everybody, welcome back to the action. Crit Dad here. Um, so I didn't have time to put my face up uh, against the green screen. I don't even know where that thing is. Don't have a lot of time in general trying to cut these things down. Uh, was having fun making the videos, but you know, got to create that content, got to keep it coming. So here we are, Milliken Grand Prix, 36th annual. I know a lot of you guys come here to uh, get information about, you know, the course, and we'll get into that. We'll get into what this course is. It was a clockwise, where all the other videos online are counterclockwise, so that was, they switched it up on us. So, uh, you know, all uh, me and my homies, Cat4 Race Tactics, out the window immediately once we got there. So, um, yeah, what can I say? This is the second race of the season for me. I did the first CBR. It was like 38 degrees. Felt good about that, so I came out here and, you know, did this one. Uh, this is my 13th race overall, uh, mostly Eldo training races. This is like the third big 70-person field race for me, so I've uh, been training in the off-season. Um, where are we at now? Yeah, doing 600 watts up this hill here. So this is a little incline. Well, I'll just we're gonna we're gonna watch three laps in the beginning, and maybe like one uh, I don't know something something interesting, and then uh, final three laps at the end. So here's the course. Uh, CBR one. I spent a lot of time at the front. Uh, I tend to do that because I don't want to be in the back and I don't like the middle because, you know, the middle is trash. You don't ever want to be in the middle if you know anything about crits, right? So, um, I spent a lot of time at the front, but I burned a lot of matches and I followed out a lot of attacks that I shouldn't have. So in this race, I just wanted to preserve my energy, so I did end up mid-pack a lot. And when you're mid-pack a lot, you can't really carry a lot of speed unless you look for areas where people are not. So that's what happens in this race is there was people we were on the brakes a lot so here you can see I'm at zero watts coasting in here on the brakes wondering I uh, don't want to be on the brakes so then everybody's surging out of the corner so there's a lot of surges like this and so I was kinda tired of this idea so I was looking for areas where people weren't and as we're going down into this third corner here we're hitting a ton of wind it was extremely windy and if you want the fastest line, you better be in the front and hit the apex. But if you stay on the inside with the group, you're going to lose all your speed and have to power up that hill. So I tried that a few times, and here I get stuck. So I'm just like, well, this isn't working. And what I end up doing is proving out that the outside line is open, and you can carry a bunch of speed uh, through the outside. So that wasn't the worst corner but there were times where the inside just got so packed up and if you're mid pack you're not you're just you're not carrying any momentum through there so uh, that's one thing I love about racing is trying to find places where people aren't trying to stay off my brakes and carry momentum around uh, corners in different ways because if the field is slowing down and it's packed up then you can take the longer way around and end up on top and I'll find out where I do that in this race. All right, so this is the um, here's an example of that third. We'll call it the third corner. So I'm like I don't know 50th wheel here, and I'm tired of going on the inside corner because it's not really resulting in anything. So I'm gonna prove out to myself that the outside is where the opening is, and I'm gonna take that out take that up and see if that works here so everyone's slowing down on the inside I'm on zero watts so I'm just cruising along the outside here give it a good dig not crit I mean sure 800 watts whatever but I don't go all the way and I just slot in right here behind um, the leaders and so I just passed the entire group on the hill so that was it that's it I mean to me that was it if you're needed to find space there was so much wind at the bottom and everybody was slowing down that that was it so um, my plan was to use that trick 
uh, with two to go, and then try to just maintain something in the front for one to go. And here I might as well just stay with these guys. I don't know why I slow down. So I was like 15 minutes in. I don't know. I just think, I, I don't know. I thought they were going to just get caught or I, I just, I wasn't, for this race, I just didn't want to go bananas. I just, I could have, I could have caught them and bridged up there, but yeah, looking back at it, I kind of wish I did. Uh, I'm not sure what happened with that group. They probably got brought back. So I think I was, my idea was, okay, so the reason I didn't go up there was because I'm not super confident in my breakaway um, skills and taking pulls with the breakaway group. So I thought I'd just slip, slip back into the washing machine and uh, see how it goes from there. And I think that those guys do get brought back. All right, so I'm just gonna play it from here. We're rolling into three laps to go. I'm following this Engine 11 rider, uh, Une, I think. And um, I just start saying, you know, up, up, like, go dude like just see if he'll go it's more of just a tactic just you know let's go let's go and get he goes he goes you know I told him I told him later you know you don't have to go if, if you know if that's not your, I'm not your teammate or anything but um, he brings me up the hill which is rad and um, we get to the front of the field and I wanted to do this on the next lap because it still took um, you know, it took some energy, but, uh, this is three to go. So here we're at, here we are three to go. And what am I thinking here? So this was another area of the course that slowed down and it was in the tailwind. So you could totally hammer it if you still had it, but everyone was kind of beat from the from the hill, and uh, they wanted to take a drink of water after passing the finish, start finish line. So for whatever reason, all pack slowed down a lot here, so you could have hammered it. And then this was also a downhill where you could hammer it, but people didn't so much. Anyway, um, yeah, I was like looking back at the areas where people let off, and was thinking, well, those would have been good places to get on it. So the wind picked up pretty harshly through here. So if you're in the front. That's the other thing, is if you broke away and you kind of got up towards the front and you got into this wind section, you're just dead. So I don't I don't think anybody really maintained a solo or even a breakaway attempt. Because um, you could just coast behind these people and everyone else was working in the wind. Alright, there goes Ryan Hastings. I knew in the orange there. I knew he was strong. So I wanted to follow him out and so... He's been at Eldo a few times. Here's him still in pretty good position going into two to go. I'm happy with this. You can tell in my voice everything falls apart. <laughs> it's like I'm I'm watching this back wondering what went wrong because I felt like, oh yeah, okay, that's right. I get pushed into the barriers. And uh, almost die. That's what we, that's what happened. So here, this rider uh, starts to go over. Oh, bam! So I declip. Uh, my elbow gets hit. My ankle hits my chain ring. Uh, I'm psychologically a little bit struck right now. Like I could have I could have definitely closed the gap to Ryan there. I was just at this point I was psychologically out of the game. And my heart rate's at 180, so I knew I was like, Ugh, I didn't know if I want to keep pushing. So that fucked me up. So that that guy, yeah. So I met Sarush, I think it is. He looked back at me like, sorry, man. Uh, he didn't mean to. You can see in the video if you go back, someone was pushing him over, and then subsequently he went over, and I was, you know, I saw the gap still, and it wasn't really closing until the last minute. But here I should be up on those guys' wheel. But I'm, again, I, I'm out of it psychologically at this point. So um, I don't want to die or crash. And that was the closest I've come to crashing. So to live another day. But I had the right 
idea. And if and you can see where Ryan is up there, he's in a good position. I take that corner kind of sloppy, but um, yep. Well, there's Cliff in the SBW kit. Oh, there goes the rider on the inside. Uh, this is one to go. There's Lance. Um, this is a place where, yeah, it'd be, it'd be better to, to be about four lengths ahead of where Cliff, like where Ryan is in the orange jersey up there. You, you kind of want to, in this race, you kind of want to be going across the finish line in like sixth place with one to go. So that was a bell lap. Uh, I'm slowly falling back because everybody's picking it up. And like I said, I'm sort of just out of it now. So my plan's gone. Um, I At this point, even in the race, I've given up because I'm sort of like, if I'm mid-pack, 20, 30 bikes ahead of me here on the last lap, it's done. So to have any real chance, you really needed to be top. 10 to 6 riders in this course heading into that first or second corner because at this point everyone's on the gas this is half one and a half laps to go and uh it's yeah we're going into the wind at 32 and this is also where i take this corner with three or three or four miles per hour more speed maybe two miles per hour more speed and i totally blow it because I'm, I'm like, oh, I can't go on the inside because it's so boxed in. And so I go on the outside. But this this rider with all the big wheels, the white lettering on his wheels, he takes a wide line. So I take a wide line. I, I just, like, hit the curb almost. So that was, that was shit. And uh, that's all she wrote. So at this point, I'm like, no need to really sprint with the group. So I kind of just fall off and uh, decide that's that. So um, learned a lot as always felt awesome like felt really good like i probably could have done another race but i had to get home to the kids like you know crit dad it's a dad he's got some kids babysitters it's a hundred dollar race right here folks so uh i would bring the kids out but they would get lost or walk on to the course or something and that would not be good but uh yeah man so that is it. One take, Nancy. Uh, got a new mic. Hope it sounds good. Come out to the next one. I think Majestic is on the uh, radar. Looks like rain, so probably won't be there. CBR number three, March 19th. I already have that scheduled. So come out if you want your butt on video. Uh, come look for me. I'm gonna have gray hair and a mustache in the Cat Force. Can't miss me. Um, yeah, excited to keep plugging along, and I'll see you at the next one. I, 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 I